What's up guys, Taylor here with Boogie Lights. Today we're going to be showing you how to do a full perimeter underglow, grill, and wheel well installation on this 2020 Jeep Wrangler. We're going to show you how to do the wiring, the controller, where to put the lights, all that good stuff. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove that grill so we can take measurements of the spaces for the lights inside. These Jeeps are always really easy. It's about five or six pop pins at the top and then you'll apply some gentle pressure, pull it outward and it'll pop right off. Next, we're going to be measuring all of the areas that we want to put lights, starting with the grill. Now, particularly with the Jeeps, we have to put the lights on the actual removable grill itself as opposed to the frame or the bumper or something in the radiator there that doesn't move. And that's because those lights are hard to hide when they are attached there. So by putting them on the removable grill, it hides the lights, but we also have to put a quick disconnect or a plug-in, something that way the lights can be removed when the grill comes off as it does for service. So we'll show you that here a little later on. Moving on, we're going to be measuring underneath the front, down the driver's side, which is the same as the passenger side length, across the rear where we have to break it into two strips because of his tow bar package, and then both of the driver's side wheel wells, which are also the same as the passenger side wheel wells. And here you can see the diagram we use for all of our measurements, which makes it super easy to know where all the LEDs are going to be placed. So as we're waiting for the strips to be made, we wanted to talk a little bit about mounting surfaces and placements of the LEDs. So for instance, on this front bumper here, you can see the gaps and ridges in the back of that plastic there, which wouldn't allow you to put a strip directly to. You can't put it on the bottom of the bumper because of the curvature of the bumper will allow you to see that strip uh, when you're looking at the Jeep. So in this instance, we use a 90 degree plastic channel, which will rivet into place right on to the backside of that plastic bumper there and then it will actually allow us to hide the strip up inside the bumper. So not only does it protect the strip, but it also gives us that full perimeter glow that we're looking for up front. For the sides, we're going to be using the same 90 degree plastic and putting it on the back side of his running board. That way the strip will go all the way down the side of the Jeep. Now, however, if I was doing this in my driveway or say you don't have plastic at home, you can certainly put that strip up uh, tucked in there on the metal itself shining down you'll get a very similar look from it just that the brackets that hold that running board in place end about a foot from each side so you'll lose a little bit of light there um, but certainly uh, a very viable option so as we move to the rear it's quite difficult to find a spot to mount the strip to you can see his exhaust is in the way here and the bottom of his tow package here is actually level if not slightly below parts of the bumper there so that strip will be seen if you place it there so what we're going to do is we're going to split it into two sections and we're going to use that 90 degree plastic uh, riveted into the bottom of the tow package here and the outside lip will actually hide that strip from being seen so the strip will go on the flat part of the bottom of the bumper there shining down while the outside lip of that 90 degree plastic will then block that light from being seen still gives you the glow underneath that you want next we're going to be finding a spot to mount his controller using some of that 3m quick lock tape so that he can remove it whenever he needs to we're going to be putting in two 18 gauge feeder cables here one of those will be about a 20 foot run to the rear to make all the connections for back there and then another two foot one to give us some breathing room to make the connections up front we're also going to be extending his battery cables with a 12 gauge hot and 12 gauge ground that's going to run all the way across the front where we'll put a fuse in right there next to the battery. So you can see here I just used some crimp on butt connectors to connect the 18 gauge feeder cables as well as extend those 12 gauge hot and ground for the battery uh, and then we use that 3M quick lock on the back and now we're going to finish wrapping everything in wire loom and we'll get it put in. So here is what the controller will look like. We've got it in place we have the 12 gauge hot and ground that is wrapped running across the front all the way over to where the battery is located where we'll put a fuse in. Here is the 2 foot 18 gauge feeder wire that's going to be connecting everything up front. And then we have the 20 foot feeder wire that is still down below that we're going to run for the rear. So in this instance we were able to fish this 18 gauge feeder cable all the way down through the frame which worked out really nicely. It keeps the uh, wire protected from the heat, the grime. We're going to leave it hanging out here in the back where the two rear strips as well as the two wheel well strips will then connect in and then we'll tuck everything up here in this corner. Next we're going to be applying the strips. After you wipe the surface with alcohol you're going to use the 3M primer and then you'll peel the tape and start to stick your lights. Now make sure you know exactly where you want your lights. 
uh, as they are designed to stay stuck. So they will come off if you want them off, but just make sure you know exactly where you want to put them. And we're going to go ahead and start with this front strip here and work our way back. Now we're on to the sides. It's going to be the exact same for the driver and passenger side. Both power leads are going to be running forward where they'll run up through the wheel wells and over to where our front jumper location is. Moving on to the rear, we're going to start with the passenger side strip first and then apply the driver side after that. Both power leads will be facing outward where the passenger side will then route back through the bumper. Next we're going to do the wheel wells. It's going to be the exact same process for all four wheel wells. Clean the surface really well with alcohol, put down your primer, and then stick your strips up. And we're going to drill a small hole in the back of the fender well liner there and feed our wire through where it's going to come up right into the engine bay and we'll run them over to our connection points. Now for the grill, we're going to mount that first strip along the bottom there underneath those clips shining up. And for the second strip, we're going to mount on the top shining down. This way both the strips will be hidden and still give us that nice glow. And then we're going to wire these two strips to one of our quick disconnect plugs. That way the grill can be removed if it ever needs to come off later. And here you can see the finished product. If we look at the wiring for the side passenger here, you can see it runs up and over the frame. And then inside of this cross support here, that keeps it nice and protected. And then that will then join up with the driver's side strip. And both of those will go up together to where our connections are up top. For the rear, I've got the driver side wheel well just fishing right behind the liner and down. That joins up with the driver side rear strip as well. And then for the passenger side, that wheel well fishes also down behind the liner and then joins up with that passenger side rear strip. And then both of those are going to get tucked inside the bumper right there, run over to where we'll make all of our connections and hide those up inside this rear bumper part here. As far as the wiring in the front goes, the front removable grill has that quick disconnect plug in the bottom right corner. That runs up along with the underglow strip, the one shining down. And then the passenger side wheel well runs along the front by the radiator here with the 12 gauge power wires we ran earlier. And then all of those join up with that driver side wheel well and come out right here. Now the sides, the bottom uh, left and right side, come up through the wheel well at the bottom there. So all of our strips are going to connect in right here. We're going to strip these wires back and get our caps put on. And here's what it should look like before you put your caps on. We have all of our red, green, blue, and black wires coming together. And now for the battery connection, we are going to take this 40 amp fuse holder and put it in line and connect that directly to the positive of the battery. And then we're going to put on a 5 16 inch battery lug onto the ground wire and connect that into the negative on the battery. Last step is to connect your battery lugs to the terminals, pop a fuse in, and give it a go. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Light them up and travel safe. Yeah.